open source 8 bit Arduino hackable drum machine Euclidean sequencer. Let's, let's give it a go. <laughs> Okay, so what we're looking at here is um, three Euclidean sequences with three selectable voices each. A Euclidean sequencer um, means you define a number of steps and then how many beats you want to place in that step. So let's just fire it up just with the first the first channel. Select the Tom uh, Tom style voice. But all the way up, it's hitting every beat. So we've got 16 beats here. Pull it back slightly. It's like distributing those beats as evenly as it can across uh, the number of steps it's got to fill. So if I went for like a short, with a few steps, half fill it, half fill it. So you do that on a few channels and quickly you get this kind of polymetric stuff. It's pretty simple, uh, but it's it's hackable, and I'll show you how. All right, let's take a look inside the box. There's not a lot in here. So what we have here is an Arduino Nano clone, and we have a bunch of potentiometers. Uh, I do apologize again for my terrible camera. Um, we have red wire, which is power, in the with the exception of the switches, the three position switches and the start stop switch, they're all wired in pull up mode. So they all go to ground, not to live. Um, we can see in here uh, each of these potentiometers, their B10Ks, go to the Arduino's analog inputs. So there's no resistors or anything in there because everything's in pull up mode. And it, it does work reasonably well. My soldering isn't the best in the world. I don't have very steady hands. I'm pretty good at it. And then on pin 9, there's this audio output. Uh, on my uh, website, my GitHub, our guide to what to solder where, basically. I just got a bit of strip board, soldered the nano straight to it. That meant I could swap things out, desolder, resolder. Uh, on occasion, I'm powering over USB, and I've just drilled a hole in the side of the case. So this is a very simple plastic case. I've got something called Bitbox. I just drilled holes in it. Um, and these at the top of three position switches, and pots just have little cheap 5p each uh, knobs on them. Um, so there we go. Very, very simple. Let's look at the software. Repository on my GitHub. Um, documented on here with some photos. Um, here's kind of the bill of materials and what I've wired to what. Um, no point in me going over that there now. Uh, best photo I could get. <laughs> the inside eye has terrible cameras. Um, and then instructions on what you would need to develop it, instructions on loading your own samples onto the machine, and then some potential ideas and stuff. If I flip over to the code, so this uses something called Mozzie. Uh, Mozzie is an open source Arduino uh, um, synthesis sound library. Um, Arduino is only 8-bit, it's very, very, very limited, so to get anything out of it at all, you do... Having something like this is incredibly powerful. It's, it does a lot of the hard work for you, otherwise you could be spending years trying to implement what they've done. Uh, I've used three of their bundled files, and then I've generated a bunch of my own. This is one of my children making a chirping noise, then a clap, a cowbell, hi-hat, kick, and snare. I sampled them off a Yamaha DD5 that belongs to my youngest child. I uh, just whacked it into my audio interface, hit them up, because the samples can only be... Uh, fairly short. I've gone for a fairly short sample length 
of 2048 samples and by samples it's like a frame of a sample um, the smallest element of, of sound you can get um, we can ignore those defines those are gone that's from an old implementation uh, so down here we've got the samples that we've loaded and then we have three pointers and these pointers are pointing to whichever um, sample is selected from the three position switches on the front we and then the K trigger delay that is an event delay which is basically saying okay um, do something make some noise on an interval so we can change this interval dynamically that's what the tempo knob does uh, so there's the tempo integer and then I'm defining what's the maximum number of steps so this goes up to 16 steps There's no reason it couldn't go higher it's just anything more than that with the Euclidean um, beats generation is kind of unmanageable and then we've got cursors for going through the various beats I'm going to remove that I don't need that comment anymore which is the cursor is basically what step are we on then we're setting all the inputs to pull up uh, all the digital inputs to pull up um, and then setting number nine to output so that's where the audio is coming out that's what's going to the jack and then these inputs are the three position and, and two position switches on the front then we're starting the mozzie engine and we're setting the frequencies of all the samples and we're initiating the initial trigger delay so we're starting the machine up um, this function should play is should a step be played so given a number of steps and given a number of beats within that should beat uh, I be played so I being the index so if you've got five steps and you want to distribute three beats along it you want it on beat one three and five to distribute it evenly so you get a like a little five five beat pattern um, so it calculates a divisor uh, I worked all this out on a spreadsheet beforehand to make sure I had it right uh, and then well should it play if it's the first beat and uh, there are any more than one beats to play then yes always put a down beat um, but then work out a score and work out what the previous score was um, because they're bytes it's rounding to to like an integer effectively rather than a float so uh, if it's going ab above the next integer it's like yes we'll play that that beat kind of hard to explain but um, if the score is more than the previous score after everything's been rounded to, to an integer then we know whether we should play it um, so if the sequence is not running this update control is a mozzie function it runs on every this is quite kind of uh, where you put all your code basically is where you put all your reading of digital and analog gubbins so take no action if it's not running so basically if the switch is off don't do anything then selecting the right samples now at the time uh, this is a little glitchy because some of my soldering is pretty trash um, I tried to solder the the little board after wiring everything in to the panel so what I should have done uh, never mind I, I didn't do a very good job on the soldering um, so some of these kind of there's a little bit of crosstalk on them but basically you you can select these and I'm sure if you build one of these you'll build it to a much higher standard than uh, than me I'm terrible with my hands um, and then we're reading the analog inputs so how many steps on the first channel how many beats on the first channel so you might have 16 steps but you want 15 steps so there'd be one step without a beat on it uh, another example here's here's loading it for the next um, the next channel so let's say you had a four you had four steps and you want three beats on it so it tried to distribute three beats across four steps uh, and then finally the last one just exactly the same thing um, if the trigger is ready it's gonna is gonna do the next do the next um, bit of uh, bit of playing should I play should I not play um, to be honest some of this code could be moved into here to do to do the logic only when the trigger's ready but yeah I mean it's not doing any harm there at the moment um, so if the cursor is more than the step length and this is the right place to do it because we might have just changed the step length here so someone's been moving it around moving the potentiometer around go back to the first beat uh, so we've got three cursors we've got a cursor for each channel um, if it should play then start the sample by dereferencing that pointer likewise for the next two so you know the, the pattern's the same and then read the tempo and initiate another trigger delay so it's like yeah like restart this if you're familiar with a uh, um, the JavaScript browser methods like interval and uh, set timeout. This is like a, a set timeout call. 
Uh, this is the first time that this Arduino stuff I've used C++ since the, the mid-90s and I didn't really understand it then. <laughs> I've been barely getting to grips with it now. All the type juggling is uh, from like PHP, JavaScript uh, background. So yeah, it's, it's, it's like proper stuff now. Um, it's update audio. So this is the thing that returns the audio. So what we're doing is we're summing together with a gain of 255, i.e. you know, a full, full byte. Uh, the three samples and then bit shifting it uh, so it's not too super loud and then if it is super loud then sorting out the peaking uh, positive or negative peaking is this is a signed integer um, and then that gets returned and that gets played and then finally we're overriding well this is how mozzie works the the loop method is an arduino method and and it has its own audio hook and that, that's literally all you do in there um, in terms of generating the sounds, um, in here we've got uh, an SFX, and in there you've got a few. You've got like the WAV file that I've used for for the chirp sound at least, and then there's uh, yeah DD five dot WAV. That's what I've ripped the other ones out of. So I sliced that up in Audacity, and then there's some code in the README. Um, which will show you how to do this. The, there's a mozzie, there we go. So there's a little Python command that can take a file and turn it into these little .h files. That's a C++ header file. If we open one of them up, um, so here's here's the hi-hats code, for example, and you can see the number of cells. So it's gotta be 2048 or it won't work. I mean, you could change it to 4096 or anything you want, really, but it would have to be the same sample length for every sample in the project because the way the pointer works, it's pointing to an area of memory, so that area of memory has to be of a consistent size, otherwise you're going to get crazy talk. Um, and then there's the actual data. That's the actual sample converted to just a ser series of numbers, which is what a sample is, right? And then it knows how fast to play that series of numbers. That's the sample rate, and the sample rate must be 16384 for everything in here. Thankfully, you can set Audacity to that sample rate, uh, and I've provided a tutorial in the in the README file uh, in here, which which talks about all that. There we go. So Audacity, Audacity. So there's some images which which show how that works. So yeah, that's the software side. Uh, I hope that's of some use.